Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about electrical connectors. And in particular, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that can aid you in diagnosing a bad electrical connector. So bad electrical connectors have been known to cause all kinds of funky problems with vehicles, from the vehicle not running, intermittent problems, circuit codes, and the list goes on. Hopefully, by the time you're done watching this video, it can clear some things up for you and aid you in the process of diagnosing those kind of problems. So the first tip I can give you is to do a good visual inspection. Look at your connectors, see if there's anything obvious wrong with them, like they're not plugged in correctly or all the way. Look for any rodent damage, loose wires, or wires coming out of the connectors. A good visual inspection a lot of times will get you out of the woods pretty quickly. And of course, that information and the information following will apply to whatever system you're trying to diagnose. If you've got a particular diagnostic trouble code or you have a particular system that's not operating correctly, you want to check the connectors in that system. Another thing you can do, particularly for faults that are intermittent, while the system is operating or running, you can take and wiggle the connectors. This is called the wiggle test. Wiggle the connector on either side of the connector while the system is in operation and it may make the problem come and go. If the problem comes and goes as you're wiggling the connector, good chance that you've got a problem with that connector there. Here's an example. Now what you just saw was the connector on an ignition module being wiggled while the engine was running. You noticed how the RPMs went up and down as the connector was being wiggled. That was a faulty connector. In this case, it actually happened to be a faulty connector and a faulty component. And that's something to keep in mind. There's two sides to this equation, guys. There's a connector and then there's a component. Or if you have two connectors coming together, there's two parts of that connection there. There's a male and a female connector. So you want to check both sides of that connection. In a lot of instances, you may have terminal fretting that's taking place that affects both sides of that equation there, and it may make the component and the connector bad or both sides of the connection bad. And we'll talk more about terminal fretting later on in this video. Now, regardless if your connector passes the wiggle test or not, you could still have a bad connector or a bad pin inside the connector. Disconnect the connector and inspect both halves, the component side and the connector side, or both halves of the connector if you have two connectors coming together. And you can see inside here, it looks a little discolored right around that area there. So I suspect I might have some corrosion inside this connector. And I do actually, I'll show you that here in just a minute. But another test you can do is a pin fitment test. We're gonna go ahead and start out with that. And I'll show you how to do a pin fitment test real quick. So a pin fitment test is basically just a test to make sure that the pins, the female pins inside here aren't wallered out. You wanna have a little bit of drag when you put a pin, a male pin inside the female connector in and out. So we'll go ahead and take our pin here, push it in and out. And you can see there's a little drag there, which that's good. And whenever you're doing this test, you want to make sure that your pin, whatever pin you're using, this is from a probe kit that I have, you want to make sure that this pin is the same dimensions of the male pins in the opposite side of this connection, in the male connector or in the component. You don't want to get a pin too big or you're going to cause a problem and you're going to cause more work for yourself in the future. Now, if I were to take this male pin here and it just goes in and out with, with ease, you don't feel any drag whatsoever, you got a bad pin inside that connector, and you'll either need to repin the connector or replace the connector. The drag is good on this one. Now, that's not the only thing you want to check. Let's go deeper. We're going to go ahead and remove this lock. This is the pin lock here. Keeps it secured and keeps the pins from scooching out there. I'm going to go ahead and remove that and... I didn't necessarily use the proper way to do that, guys. But uh, you can see on this pin right here in particular, there's a little bit of green corrosion inside there. This is a connector off of a throttle body. I actually replaced the connector and the throttle body because the male pins in the throttle body were corroded as well. Uh, but you want to check for corrosion. You want to make sure you got nice and clean pins inside there. Also, you want to make sure that none of the pins are pushed out. They're all pushed forward. And that goes for the male side of the connector too. You want to make sure all your male pins are pushed forward all the way and that they don't pull out. You can give these a little tug on the back here. And that's, that's making sure that the pins are fitted in there all the way. It's also checking 
to make sure that the crimp on the wires are secure as well. You don't want to pull too hard, just a, a little tug, you know, should do it, uh, but those pins should not come out. And I'm going to take a couple of these pins out and I'm going to show you the inside where it's crimped. A lot of times what you can have is a poor crimp on the wire where you only got a few strands of the wire inside the crimp and it doesn't really make a good contact and that can cause intermittent problems or hard faults. So we're going to go ahead and depin this. That's done easily enough. We just unlock it here, unlock the lock and pull out. Okay, just to clarify here, guys, uh, there are two locks. Uh, actually, there are several locks on this. Uh, the main one was the red one that I removed earlier, and that's kind of like the bulk lock that keeps all of the locks for the individual pins locked in. And then there's individual locks per pin uh, inside the connector there. So those are the locks that I'm trying to unlock right now for the individual pins. Also, it's best to do the tug test on the individual wires at the back of the connector with all the locks in place, including the big bulk lock. I got a little ahead of myself there, so when you're tugging on the wires, be sure all your locks are in place, and then proceed to dissect it if you need to. Now, you notice that crimp right there, and this is actually a good crimp. You can see you got plenty of those wire strands inside the crimp, and you got good metal-to-metal -metal contact between the wires and the crimp there so that's good now in certain cases you might have one or two of those strands inside that crimp and the rest of the wiring is back up in here and if you were to take and pull this it would actually pull the pull the wire right out of the crimp there so that's another thing to be aware of too usually problems like that are caught pretty pretty quickly after the vehicle has been manufactured because it will cause a problem <clears throat> within a, a, a pretty short distance there, but it's still possible to catch a problem like this later on in the life of the vehicle. So you wanna check that as well. There you go, let me take one more out for you as well. I know you can't really see what I'm trying to do right here, and this isn't really a video on how to depin your connector. There we go. And you can see that crimp is good on that one as well. Now you saw how on this pen it was corroded. You can see that green corrosion right there. So something is wrong with this connector or the component that it connected to uh, causing moisture to get inside this connection here. So we may have a bad seal inside there or we may be uh, having water wick into that connector somehow. Uh, so more diagnostics may be needed to, to find out where that corrosion or how that corrosion is actually getting in there. Um, but these, these connectors have a weather seal, and this, this one is a green one right here that you see. Let me try to take that out for you, let you see it. There we go, sorry if the focus is going in and out, guys. But uh, yeah, that's your weather seal right there, and that's responsible for keeping the, uh, the moisture and elements out of this connection right here. Um, there's also some rubber seals where the wires go into the back there too, so those could be faulty as well. So just another thing to look out for when diagnosing something like this. You also want to check the locks of your connectors. Make sure you get a good fit on those connectors and that they're locked totally in. Faulty lock on a connector can cause the connector to come loose and it can also cause the pins not to make adequate contact on the inside there. Also check for cracking on the shell of the connector and any other kind of damage that is not supposed to be on the connector. You want to watch out for that too. Okay, so as mentioned, we were going to talk about terminal fretting a little bit here too. Uh, I'm not going to get real heavy into it. I'll post a link to an article down in the description of this video. You're welcome to read up on it. That will explain a little bit more about terminal fretting to you. But hypothetical, say you reconnect the connector. You didn't find anything wrong with it. You reconnect it and then now your problem is gone and it doesn't act up anymore. What in the world is going on there? Well, you probably had terminal fretting inside the connector there or on the pins of the connector. And terminal fretting is basically just a little bit of corrosion on either or uh, the female connector or pin or the male pin of the connector there. And when you disconnect it and reconnect it, it basically cleans off the pins and you establish a good contact again. Um, a lot of times in those instances, I may just go ahead and replace both sides of the connector to solve the problem, but in many instances, you can actually just spray the terminals out with some uh, electrical parts cleaner and add a little bit of dielectric grease to the connector, uh, the pins of the connector, and then reconnect it and you'll probably be okay.
But when you do reconnect it and you put the connector back in place, you want to make sure it's secure. A lot of times terminal fretting can be due to vibrations and also heat uh, expanding and contracting and things like that. Uh, but make sure that it's secure. It's not going to sit there vibrating and that it's uh, locked into place like it's supposed to be. And you should be good to go on that. Now, I'm not saying it's okay to not replace the connector, but uh, a lot of times you don't have to. So folks, just a few things you can check and a few more tools in your arsenal and your diagnostics there. I hope this helps you. Uh, this isn't a full comprehensive video. Uh, it's just a few tidbits of information that hopefully will help you in the process of diagnosing whatever problem you have out there. Folks, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Also, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some things I need to clarify. That's where I do that. Also, please read the disclaimer at the very end. And always like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.